It's good family, but yes, sir, bro. Dang and Ropa community. I am about to say some stuff about your favorite characters you guys have never heard anybody say, bro. If you're new to this video, I don't want to see anybody in the comment section. Wow, this guy cusses so much. Wow, this guy talks too much. Get the fuck out this goddamn video, my nigga. If it's your first time ever, either good luck or goodbye, my nigga, on some real shit, bro. Here we go. I am ranking every single dang and rope of V1 character and V2 character, my nigga. All the niggas right here. I have not played V3 yet, my nigga. Who the fuck is this fake-ass Jason Voorhees? Who is this fake-ass Jason Voorhees, nigga? I have no goddamn idea, my nigga. We play that shit next, and I cannot wait, my nigga. V3 has a lot of mixed reviews, bro. I see niggas saying it's the best game of the fucking three. I see niggas saying it's the worst game. I see niggas saying the fucking ending is terrible. I see niggas saying the ending is the most goaded out of any game they fucking played, my nigga. It's completely mixed Gameplay. I don't know what the fuck to expect, my nigga, but I am ready. Before I start this shit, I need somebody to tell me, my nigga. I know I gotta watch Dang and Ropa 3 or some shit for the anime. I know I also gotta hear about the Spare Girls. I'm not playing that bullshit, but Lizzie had the fucking toughest time even finishing that game. I don't even know if he beat that shit, my nigga. I have no fucking idea, bro. But somebody explain to me what the fuck I have to do, exactly what I have to watch before I play V3, my nigga. Now, on to the goddamn video, my nigga. Let's see this shit, bro. Dang and Ropa community. No disrespect, but ample disrespect, my nigga. Starting off with the homie Viakia, my nigga, on some real shit. There is not much to say about this good ass, smart ass, amazing ass character arc ass nigga, bro. I love Viakia Togami, my nigga. He started off as the ultimate asshole, cussing everybody out. He literally fucking sectioned himself off from the entire goddamn group because he did not want to be around us, bro. And now that nigga's the part of the fucking big three, my nigga. That is crazy, dog. Like, if you told me that his character arc would have been like that from a fucking dumbass Sasuke X nigga to actually being a part of the group and like laughing with Makoto, daffing up Kyoko, like, damn, yeah, alright, let's go ahead and get the fuck up out of here. Like, that is crazy, dog. And the thing about this character is, my nigga, which I will do this for a lot of characters, I genuinely like this fucking game. His whole thing was about being a part of like a big ass successful family, right? He is the ultimate. Progeny or prodigy, whatever the fuck that dumbass P word is, my nigga. He is the ultimate family nigga. He lost his family on the outside world to whatever the fuck happened outside that shit, my nigga. The biggest, most destructful fucking event in human history, whatever the fuck, besides slavery. And he found a new family with the Makoto and Kyoko. I don't know if anybody's caught that shit, my nigga, but he's like saying, all right, I know I came from the Togami family, my nigga, but these two people right here, Makoto and Kyoko, is my new family family and I love these niggas and I will do anything to protect them my nigga and Toko of course I don't know about Hero I don't know what the fuck Hero doing right now I have no idea my nigga he might still be alive he might not still be alive I still gotta watch the fucking anime bro but he found a new family within these two niggas it's crazy bro that is just absolutely insane to me my nigga like holy fucking shit my nigga AOE she is bad as hell <laughs> she definitely bad as hell my nigga the one turnoff I have about AOE is when she tried to kill everybody inside the entire fucking group on some Nagito shit because she thought we disrespected Sakura, which was directly going against what the fuck Sakura wanted in the long run, my nigga. AOE is the only one that read that fuck ass suicide letter, my nigga. She read throughout the entire goddamn thing. I was like, wow, Sakura wants us all to prosper. Holy shit. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and lie throughout this entire case and try to kill everybody here, my nigga. Like, why? You were the only one, my nigga. I know Makoto switched the letters and shit, but she knew Sakura better than anybody, bro. She knew Sakura wouldn't have wanted that bullshit. She knew she wouldn't have wanted that bullshit, my nigga. I would put her inside Go Tier, but I'm gonna put her inside You Cool on some real shit. She's not really that dope of a character. Didn't do anything in any fucking case whatsoever other than almost try to kill every single one of us. She bad as hell. She's funny. She brings, of course, like motivation to the group, my nigga. So she's not and whatsoever, but she's definitely inside you cool. 1000%, my nigga. Celeste! This is one character I wish I would have talked to a lot more throughout the entire fucking game, my nigga. I know she had a huge gambling addiction. I know that was kind of her whole fucking character arc, my nigga. Her whole character trope. But I really don't know that much about her, bro. I know that she, of course, tricked the me into doing her light work for her, and then he fucking. She killed the nigga after that shit. But other than that shit, my nigga, Celeste is. She's an ad character, bro. Like, she's definitely... She just exists to me. Like, I know a lot of you niggas probably like Celeste, my nigga. I'm not doing this shit off how attractive they are. I'm not doing this shit about the fucking... The one bad scene where they're all showing ass like this, my nigga. Going crazy. Just, I don't know, twerking on each other and shit, my nigga. I'm not doing it based off that shit, bro. I'm doing it based off how I like their character. 
and how much their character made sense inside the entire fucking series, my nigga. And Celeste, she was kind of just there until she wasn't type shit. Actually, I'll put her inside you cool. Because the first two trials, she was a part of like the big four, my nigga. It was Byakuya, Celeste, Kyoko, and the Makoto kind of just watching them three go crazy. Celeste was a part of this shit a little bit, my nigga. So I will move her up. She's not eh, but she's definitely like on the same tier as AOE to me, my nigga. God damn. The homie Chihiro, bro. Woo! That shit hit me hard, my nigga. That shit hit me very fucking hard, bro. Oh my god, bro. Chihiro had probably one of the best... Probably one of the best trials and best cases and best deaths like in the entire fucking series to me, honestly. Just like the reason that he ended up dying, you know, he's really trying to become confident, he's trying to get stronger. He put all of his trust into the strongest nigga inside the entire fucking, I guess, I guess dang in V1, my nigga. I guess other than Sakura, Mondo was definitely like one of the strongest niggas. Because she, I think Chihiro was being trained by Mondo and Sakura, if I remember correctly, bro. But Chihiro just, he lost because he was too weak, my nigga physically but he lost because he was too strong mentally my nigga like mondo got so fucking jealous of how strong this little fucking boy was my nigga like how could somebody so small be this stronger like mentally than me that's actually crazy to me bro i'm putting chihiro inside dopes here 1000 percent and the fact that chihiro created something that literally spawned an entire fucking nah fuck that fuck that i'm putting chihiro inside goat tier my nigga dope is all right but goat tier is definitely where chihiro belongs at Chiro created an alter ego that spawned another fucking series, my nigga. There would not be a V2 if Chihiro didn't exist whatsoever. In the same way, V2 kind of needs uh, Byakuya, V2 kind of needs Makoto and Kyoko as well, my nigga. But Chihiro caused that shit. Chihiro created the fucking alter ego that made all that shit even possible. For sure, go to it. For sure, my nigga. Toko just kind of, I don't know, bro. <laughs> Toko was just kind of, she wasn't annoying, she, like her character was definitely a good ass character, I know this might upset a lot of you niggas watching this shit right now, cause a lot of y'all are fucking obsessed with Toko and just the character that she is, honestly I kind of like shy Toko better my nigga, they're both dope characters, but it's just something about her that won't let me put her inside that gold tier. She definitely doesn't deserve anything below dope, not at all, not at all, not at all. She's not on the same level as AOE or Celeste. But she's not quite that go tier to me, my nigga. Maybe if I played, I think somebody said she was inside Ultra Despair Girls for like the entirety of the fucking game. Maybe after I see that shit or see what the fuck going on inside the game, I probably move her up maybe. But inside just dang it one, my nigga, like she was just kind of existing throughout the entire game, bro. She added, you know, unique dialogue. Um, the fact that she switched back and forth, of course, added more fucking suspense to the cases and shit like that i suppose my nigga but that's about it bro which is kind of the same i feel about taka i feel like taka didn't get a chance to actually grow as a character what so fucking ever my nigga i feel like he kind of just he was going on amazing trajectory to be an amazing character and then that nigga died like the fact that he fused with mondo and like had some super saiyan shit going on inside his mind or some shit my nigga the same thing that hajime did he was going to, he was about to go crazy, about to go crazy, but I really can't count about, he was a very cool character up until that point, but at just as he was about to come in like a fan favorite, that nigga died immediately, Kyoko, I don't gotta say much about her, obviously a goaded tier character, we didn't know what the fuck her ability was, we didn't know what the fuck her ultra was, but she still backpacked every single fucking case, up until the very end my nigga like she did everything even without knowing what the fuck you're meant to do in life and you still accomplish that shit my nigga that's kyoko she passed that shit with flying fucking colors my nigga like the pride flag to fool me <laughs> this nigga he really he don't deserve anything above and type shit my nigga like a fumi's an ant character but he just i don't know i had a little like razzle dazzle to the nigga a little bit bro like a fumi without <laughs> Without me, my nigga, and I'm guessing Berlizzi and Jay also made the character kind of cool to watch, but, like, what was this nigga's character without the extra shit added to him, my nigga? Like, was he cool without the commentary added from me and the other niggas that filmed Danganronpa? Was he cool without that shit? I don't know, bro. I'll put it for me inside cool. 
This nigga was just to fuck up the entire thing. Nothing but comic relief that really wasn't even that funny most of the time, my nigga. But he was just a comic relief character. That's all he was. Just a big ass gag character. No pun intended. Because he was big as hell, my nigga. Fat as hell. That nigga literally had to fucking boom, 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 boom. Every time he walked like fucking fat ass Tugami Biakia, my nigga. Other than that shit, he was a cool character, I guess. Leon... You were important, I guess, technically inside the second game, but you still an end character. There's nothing special about this nigga. He seemed cool. You talked to him maybe one time. The nigga got set up and immediately fucking died five minutes into the game. Same with this bitch right here. But I don't understand why this character, Sayaka, has the biggest fan base out of any character in this entire fucking game, bro. She was not alive for more than 20 minutes. Five minutes of your speed running, like nigga, damn. Uh, you maybe get like five lines where, yo, I went to middle school with her. Yo, she's the ultimate, the ultimate pop star. Hell yes, hell yes, dead as hell. Like what the fuck? How does she have the biggest fan base out of everybody, bro? What? More than Sakura? More than Chihiro? Uh, uh, more than Hero himself, my nigga? No way. And the man Hero? I don't know how that nigga survived. I ain't gonna hold you at all, my nigga. Hero is the one character, maybe a few characters from Danny Ropa V2. There is no possible fucking way. Don't mind the motorcycles and shit. Niggas got speed racers and shit on this fucking street. They be speeding all the fucking time. I can't wait till a police officer pulls them over and then, I don't know, writes their epilogue on some real shit, my nigga. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. But this nigga, he was written to be the most... <laughs> He shouldn't have survived anything, bro. How did you make it to the final six niggas? There's no way, bro. But to me, you cannot beat this character. He obviously is like, apparently in the entire Ding community, he's just like the canonical, like, smoker head, my nigga. Like, he's always going to be smoking no matter who the fuck you ask. Like, this nigga never says one thing about weed, but we all know that nigga uh, uh, puffs that shit, my nigga. Puff the magic dragon. We know that shit. We know that shit. Mondo. To me, was a very ant character. I'll put him inside you cool. Because that nigga had just a lot of stuff brewing inside him. I wish they would have dwelled into it a little bit deeper about how he like truly felt about his, you know, the gang he was trying to be. I feel like Mondo was what they did perfect for the homie Fuyuhiko. Like he was going to be the next prodigy inside the Yakuza. Mondo's going to be the next prodigy inside his uh, biker gang or whatever the fuck. But they just did it so much better than Fuyuhiko, my nigga. They did it so much better for Fuyuhiko that Mondo kind of just like... He's like lesser Fuyuhiko to me. They both got the same kind of attitude. They're always mad, always yelling. But the only difference is Mondo is like actually built to be that gang leader type shit. Fuyuhiko isn't. He's still trying to grow into those shoes. But same character kind of... One just did it drastically better, which is Fuyuhiko, 1000%. Sakura... We know where she's going, my nigga. Probably one of the most goaded, most recognizable characters inside the Dengaropa franchise, 1000%. She did her fucking thing. She died for a reason. She gave that extra push to the niggas to make them get to the very fucking end, my nigga, and survive all that shit easily. Junko, we know she's a goaded ass antagonist. I don't know how the fuck she keeps coming back. If she somehow finds a way to shimmy her way into V3, I'm not gonna know what the fuck to think, my nigga. She died inside V1. All right, cool. She was a virus inside V2, and then what is she gonna be inside V3, my nigga? Virus part two? Like, what the fuck is going on, bro? Like, there is no way she's inside that shit. New antagonist, please for V3, bro. Please for V3. Please, 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 my nigga. If she finds a way back, yo, I'm still alive. Like, what the f How? <laughs> it makes no sense, my nigga. Like, you died 3,000 times inside V1, but you are a goaded ass antagonist. For both games, I'd say inside V1 and V2, you are a very great antagonist. You definitely, you know, put up things that made the made the player think like, damn, what's the, what, what the fuck should I do? Because inside V2, her whole thing was like, yo, you can live and I'll give you all your friends back if you guys just choose to work for me. Or you can die inside this bum ass fucking world without your friends and die lonely was a crazy ass fucking a crazy ass thing to choose from i ain't gonna hold you at all bro monokuma he's that nigga you know he is my nigga you know he is bro my voice is fucked up yesterday from video i ain't gonna hold you all my nigga yesterday's video for three hours i was screaming for three hours straight my voice is still fucked up my voice is still fucked up from that i can't i can't quite do the voice right now but we'll try to get that back for v3 my nigga the homie makoto god damn bro Still the ultimate Makoto dick rider. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying fuck, my nigga. He is the GOAT. 
This nigga, if I had to choose one person to sink a three with five seconds left, my nigga, I would choose that nigga Makoto Nyegi. Why the fuck wouldn't you, bro? Why the fuck wouldn't you? Most amazing character we've seen, bro. I know he started off with no fucking talent, no fucking ability, no fucking ultimate, no anything. This nigga had to formulate strategies, make new friends with niggas they did not want to talk to, like Byakuya. Kyoko was mad weird at the very beginning. He had to make friends with Sakura, like all these different niggas, and somehow survive to the very fucking end with no ultimate at all, bro. This nigga was just lucky throughout the entire thing, and not even like Nagito lucky. Like his luck was just like the fact that he won, and that's it. Nagito's luck was on he was on some other shit. Now, he had some actual superpowers type shit, my nigga. But Makoto didn't. And they got to survive. Imagine, look. Why I like Makoto so much is like imagine like you got put into Dangaropa. You, me, anybody anybody watching this video right now, my nigga, just a regular ass person. You get put inside this fucking school. With all these niggas with amazing talents, amazing powers, amazing ass fucking abilities, amazing strength, amazing speed, amazing athleticism. And you're told to survive amongst all these niggas for two months. And you make it to the very end, not only in the final five, but arguably the best inside that final five. And you figured out at the entire fucking story, my nigga, that you are the ultimate hope. And you'll be the only one to inspire everybody from here on out. That shit is insane, my nigga. That shit is absolutely fucking insane, my nigga. And it's like, it wasn't shoehorned in at the very end like I like Hajime was. I'll talk about him whenever I get to him. As you can see, he's the last one I'm going to be grading because I have a lot to say about the nigga Hajime. And I'm sure you guys all want to hear how I feel about Hajime in the last fucking, after finishing the game and everything, bro. Makoto's wasn't shoehorned. There wasn't some random ass fucking teacher. Yo, you remind me of Professor Izuru. Like, at the very fucking last trial, my nigga. Like, what? who is that? What? What are you talking about? His shit was genuine and came naturally when it was supposed to, my nigga. After he inspired everybody, do not give a fucking hope. Let's go out there and destroy whatever evil's out there waiting for us. That nigga's the goal, bro. Makoto niggas, I see y'all in the comments every now and then, but I ain't gonna hold you. I be getting attacked by the Hajime niggas non-stop. They be in my DMs on every single fucking social media and in my comment section. Makoto niggas, rise the fuck up. We got this shit, bro. Let me know you're Makoto nigga yourself, bro, because they call me the fucking ultimate dick rider every fucking day. I've been talking about this nigga probably for the past, like, three minutes. It's been three minutes. <laughs> like, nigga, god damn, bro. All right. V2. Let's go ahead and start off with this, my nigga. I have a lot of thoughts. A lot of thoughts about all these characters. Akane... As you niggas know, I was very interested in what her character was going to bring her at the very fucking beginning of the game. She was just, she did anything, she wouldn't let anybody tell her what the fuck to do, she was wild, very sporadic, very attractive of course, we all know that shit, very fucking attractive my nigga. But her character did not change at all throughout the entire fucking game. She was sporadic at the very beginning. Which if they were amazing, they would have made her like start slowly getting more and more controlled, listening to more people, and then at the very end, she'd be more like a, a controlled tank unit. Like, yeah, hey, Akane, don't do that right now. She'd be like, alright, best, say less. I'll stay here and wait for y'all to tune in. No, nigga. No. She stayed sporadic at the beginning. She got Nekamaru killed. She got more niggas almost killed, and at the very end, she still was trying to attack Monokuma. Literally in the last fucking trial in the virtual world? Akane almost lunged at that nigga Monokuma again. You gotten like five niggas killed so far, bro. No, 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 no. Hell nah, hell nah. Like the fact that she got Nekamaru destroyed by a fucking missile and nigga lost his human side like Cyborg or some shit. Then he came back as a metal robot. Like, Yo, what's up, my nigga? Hey, I'm a robot now. And she did the same thing again and made that nigga step in front of her again. Like, no, man. Your ass, you didn't learn anything. You cried for the past three days, wish for this nigga to come back, bro. You almost killed him again. <laughs> Fuck that. No, 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 no. I hate her character, bro. She's trash. She's trash. She's very attractive. She got the bazongas 1000%, but she, no, I, I hate her character, bro. Desp I despise her. I despise her. Nekamo, on the other hand, that nigga, he might make it to dope tier for me. He might make it to dope tier. Very much teetering on that GOAT tier 1000%, bro. He stayed motivational. He could have easily killed somebody because that nigga's size is crazy. Pause! Big ass pause on that shit. 
That nigga was one of the best characters inside the entire game. And the game knew that shit. Spike Chunsoft knew that shit himself. Because he kept bringing that nigga back. Like, he died as a human. He died as a robot. And then came back as a fucking alarm clock. And still kept talking. And still kept carrying the fucking dialogue. Like, his comedic timing was way better than the Fumis, bro. Like, his shit was like a... As a gag character, he was just way better. He wasn't a gag character, obviously. And, of course, the entire thing with Gundam. How they came together like, yo. We want our friends to get out. Let's fight each other. Whoever the fuck wins this shit, sacrifice yourself so they can get out. They both came together and sacrificed each other, bro. I guess since I'm talking about this, I'll move Gundam to the very beginning. But Gundam and Nekamaru, I feel like Gundam, he might be he might be in that GOAT tier. He might be in that GOAT tier. Because I like Nekamaru from the very beginning, bro. If you're able to like come from a hated character to all the way being very much loved, my nigga, to the very end... That, that brings you to go tier for me anyway, 1 trillion percent, bro. This nigga, I thought he was a weird ass nigga, had hamsters crawling around his ball sack and shit. I don't know what the fuck was going on. A nigga met a little girl, started changing a little bit, was like, not a little girl, I'm talking about Sonya, my nigga. He got him a girlfriend, was like, yo, bro, maybe this good guy shit is actually fire, bro. Maybe it's actually fire, bro. I don't know if that's what changed him ultimately. I don't know if that's what made him sacrifice his life because of Sonya, I have no idea. Maybe you guys know the lore a lot better than me. But I do know that she was a big part of, like, helping him become more human-like. He definitely was making more jokes. He was definitely uh, just a, a top-tier character to me anyway, bro. Nekamaru for sure dope tier, but Gundam... The fact that he beat Nekamaru, the fact that he still ended up sacrificing himself... Because I went back and watched that trial. That nigga was telling us from the very beginning that he did it, basically. That nigga, he didn't want to He didn't want to be hidden about that shit. That nigga definitely wanted us to find out so he could be voted off type shit. Go, go character 1000%. Chiaki. As I said in the finale, I didn't really have that connection with her like you guys did. I know she's a very, very great character. I know that. I know that. I know that. I wish I would have talked to her a little bit more to kind of figure out her backstory and stuff like that. But finding out that even if I heard her backstory, it wouldn't even fucking exist because she was an NPC, my nigga. Like anything she would have told me wouldn't have been real. That's why I don't understand why you guys wanted me to talk to Chiaki so bad. Like, she could have been like, yeah, my childhood was just very rough growing up. But, like, it would have all been made up anyway. She was an NPC character that was implemented by Alter Ego. And so was Monami. So, like, all these niggas' backstories were very much real. Very much real. But Chiaki's was kind of like some made-up bullshit that was added to the script last second. That's not going against her character. I very much like her arc. She got from a very, very, very shy person to being the leader of the group damn near. And making sure Makoto knew what, what the fuck. Not Makoto. <laughs> Making sure Hajime knew what the fuck was going on. Um, keeping Nagito in check a little bit every now and then. She definitely wasn't from a, a shy character. It's like a stronger uh, character. 1000% bro. So Chiaki will go inside dope tier for me. She doesn't deserve anything less. But I won't put her inside that gold tier. Because her character just wasn't. It didn't quite get me there. But I don't know what it was. I know this is probably going to be the biggest fucking angry thing about this shit. Her character arc just didn't really get me there like it should bro unfortunately unfortunately i'm tempted to put it inside you're cool honestly but i can't put it down here with mondo and fumi and celeste and taka and them fuck no she definitely deserves to be up here with toko and nekamara 1000 percent this nigga he just didn't exist at all bro you're a very ad character i thought he was biakia at first and even if he was biakia I don't think I would have put him inside that go to tier, bro. Like, his character was just, it was cool. It was a very cool character. I'll put him right here. Like, he definitely was the leader. He stepped up, did his thing, but he was just being fake. <laughs> like, and when you find out at the end of the day, my nigga, that he's not even Biaki, he's just acting like another nigga. Like, what do you really act like? What the fuck is your actual character? You're just trying to, and you're trying to imitate another nigga, and that's why we kind of like you. Like, the only reason niggas like this character. It's because he was Biakia. We thought like, yo, that nigga, he's back. He's back. That's crazy. But then we found out he wasn't. It was kind of like, okay, then who are you, nigga? Like, why do we like you? There's no fucking reason, bro. You're going down to M. You're down here with these niggas. We knew nothing about you. <laughs> we knew nothing about you. Hell nah, bro. Hioka. Let me talk about her for a little bit. I heard... Inside the original game, somebody talked about a paragraph last video. You can, guys can go uh, try to find it if you want to. But he was basically saying that Danganronpa V2 was very, very, very much rushed. Like, they saw how fast Danganronpa 1 was blowing up. So they are like, we need to get another game out right now. So they created this game in like two years. 
And the thing is, Hyoka apparently inside their original Danganronpa V2, like the plan was to make her survive all the way to the end of the series and have her be like that little sister that Fuyuhiko had and have her take that spot and they like kind of bounce back and forth off each other. That would have been fire. That would have been absolutely fire. And I know there's a reason they made her as a little girl other than her being the fucking newspaper shit. I know there's a reason, bro. And I'm pretty sure that was that reason. And if they kept that shit, that would have been amazing. Because the only thing about her death is that it, it felt shoehorned. It felt shoehorned. Like, she wasn't supposed to die right there. She wasn't supposed to even be inside that room. She basically died for literally no reason other than her just dying right there to add another character to the fucking death roster to kind of speed it up a little bit. I think they just didn't want like seven niggas alive at the very end of this shit. They wanted that five and then they suck with that shit and they like, who else can we kill off? The thing about her death is anybody could have gone right there. Anybody could have gone right there. What was significant about Mikan dying there is because she was the ultimate musical artist. Like, obviously, her dying inside that fucking music avenue or Titty Typhoon, whatever the fuck it's called. Like, it makes sense. Like, her whole arc is being loving music and shit. So, her dying and being hung inside of a fucking stage, it means a lot. Like, there's significance to that. Hyoko, I don't even know what the fuck... What the hell was her damn ultimate? The ultimate childish bitch? What was that shit? I have no idea, but... Her death definitely wasn't supposed to be deserved right there. If they would went with that arc, like I said, it would have been more fire. I'll put her inside you cool, I guess, because she definitely belongs here with these niggas right here. Mikan was a dope-ass character. A very dope-ass character. She brought life to everything. She tried to keep the group together multiple fucking times. She tried to make everybody laugh. And she was that happy-go-lucky character all the way until she fucking died, my nigga. Like, I don't think her character was meant to have any growth whatsoever. I think her character was kind of just there to keep the group happy, basically. And then once they lost that, if you guys notice, if you go back and replay the game or watch a gameplay or some shit like that, once they lost Mikan, nobody was the happy character after that. Like, nobody, everybody was either awkward, shy, angry, Nagito-esque. Like, nobody was that happy character after Mikan died, 1,000%. Everybody was kind of just them like that's just how they were my nigga if you want to count Sonya maybe but Sonya wasn't as you know outgoing or happy-go-lucky as Mikan was Mikan was always trying to perform scream laugh shout whenever the fuck she could Sonya was more of like a reserved character like she of course she was happy-go-lucky I guess but she wasn't she was still reserved and shy a little bit my nigga Kazuichi bro god damn I don't like about this character how manipulative he was, my nigga. Not manipulative, because he wasn't manipulating anybody, but what's the opposite side? Like, how manipulative bull. Like, the fact that anybody could tell this nigga anything, and he'll just fucking run with that shit immediately, that's the one part about his character I didn't like. Because he was the only one, after me hanging out with this nigga so fucking much, that was a sim that was convincing of the, you know, thinking that Hajime was actually the fucking traitor or whatever the fuck. And the only reason he believed that shit is because Nagito said it, my nigga. It's like a little offhand remark. Nagito said one time, oh, it might be Hajime. And that nigga heard that shit and ran with it, bro. Like, no, there was no evidence whatsoever. The only evidence they had was I don't remember my ability. But <laughs> so did Makoto, my nigga. Nobody thought he was the fucking traitor. Nobody thought that bullshit, my nigga. But yeah, fuck that shit, bro. He... He was cool, I just didn't like how he was able to be so easily manipulated, but I guess that was a part of his character. I wish they would have played into the fact that Sonya had more control over him, like I wish, I wish she would have been the one to manipulate him. If you're making this nigga do anything that Sonya says, if you're making this nigga be the fucking, oh, Miss Sonya, I'll listen to anything, like shit like that. He said that multiple times, and the writers never thought, hmm, what if we try to turn Sonya against Hajime? And make him or make her be the reason that Kazuchi don't fuck with Hajime as well. That would have been fire, but it was Nagito. Like, nigga, we don't even like that nigga. But he was a dope character. He was a very dope character. Sanya also as well, my nigga. 1000%, bro. There's. I've noticed that there's a lot of characters inside this that I might. Let's see how I can word this. Danganronpa V2 had a lot of characters more than the first game. Where you can latch on to more. Like a lot of these characters have more character arts. They have more personality. Like the V2 characters have probably have a, a bigger fan base in my opinion. Than the V1 characters. Because like who the fuck cares about Celeste. Who really cares that much about Taka. Who really cares that much about Ifumi. Who really cares that much about Leon, Sayaka. But like these characters from V2. 
you're gonna see a lot more niggas being dope Kyoko may even be dope as well. Maybe I might move her up. Maybe, but I'm not. I think she deserves to be right there. But you're gonna see a lot more characters being dope in Goat tier more than V1 because V1 characters kind of just most of them were just there just for fucking to die off. Let's let's really keep it a bug. Let's really keep it a bug. Sonya, never mind, wasn't one of those characters though. She definitely added to the story a lot. She was the only character I've seen in a while that genuinely helped you with evidence throughout most of the fucking trials. Like. We would not have won the second trial with Peko Peko if it wasn't for Sonya. We would not, I mean, of course we would have, but it would have been a lot more difficult and the whole fucking, the Max thing would have made any sense without Sonya. Um, Sonya helped with the Nagito trial, like she was there to help throughout a lot of this shit. And she also helped us with like the bombs and stuff like that, very dope character. Teetering Gotier, Teetering Gotier for sure. Peko, I liked her character art. I feel like a lot of niggas might just like her because she's a sexy ass woman, but that's about it. But I feel like her character as a whole, you know, us not knowing anything about her, we know she's the swordsman. And at the very end, finding out that she works for Fuyiko and was like actually his assassin since birth, that shit was very dope to me. Very dope to me. She don't deserve a side, you cool. She definitely deserves a top tier character like that for sure. Um, nothing really much to say about it. We didn't know that much about her. We just knew that she took a shit. <laughs> and that she was the assassin for Fuyuko. That's all we knew about her, basically. Teru Teru, my nigga. You going straight to booty here. I ain't gonna hold you at all, my nigga. He's going to end. He's not going above that shit. Like, he's down here with Byakuya type shit, my nigga. He was a cool character, but... Somebody brought up something to me that, of course, has nothing to do with him because he didn't know. But the nigga's motive was he did this shit to get back to his mom. Knowing at the end of the game... That this nigga probably killed his mom before going to that school. Like, that's insane, bro. Like, he did that for no reason. Like, his whole motive was, yo, I want to get back to my mom. I want to get back to my mom, my man. But then inside the last child, we find out that all the V2 characters killed their families. So you weren't going back to nobody, my nigga. You was going back to bloodshed. Like, why, why the fuck they got blood stains all over the carpet, mama? Mama? Mama, where you at? Like, nigga, you killed her, bro. But other than that, he was a cool character. Um... I don't like how he... Act I'm moving up to cool. I'll move up to cool. Because this whole thing was that he wanted to kill Nagito before Nagito got a chance to kill Byakuya. So he technically was a good character at the very end. Um, I don't know if there was... I feel like there wasn't another plot twist where like, he saw it was Byakuya, but he still kept stabbing anyway. I forgot that was one of the lines or not. Um, but the fact that he at least wanted to try to save the group for a little bit still brings him from the end here. He was a cool character for sure. This is the only nigga that might get a lot of fucking talking time from me out of any fucking character. And honestly, it makes me want to add another fucking role. I ain't gonna hold you at all, bro. Like, this nigga Nagito, it's gonna be hard to top this nigga in fucking any sense of the goddamn word. Pause on that shit. His antagonist arc, starting from a jovial ass nigga. <laughs> I love you guys. Yes, you guys are all ultimates except me. And having that be a part of his fucking arc, my nigga, he went from a jovial ass, happy go lucky ass nigga to kind of doubting himself and saying, like, I don't even need to be around these ultimate ass niggas, to then being the stepping stone and wanting to be the stepping stone for all these ultimates to become better than him, my nigga, to then being like, you niggas don't even fucking exist and you're all despair anyway. Fuck y'all bum ass niggas. That character arc is insane, bro. This nigga Nagito, bro, aside from his character arc, his ultimate is the most interesting ultimate we have ever seen in any fucking game, bro. You got the ultimate lucky student, which isn't even the same thing as Nagito's luck, the ultimate prodigy, the ultimate fucking AI creator, whatever the fuck, the ultimate detective, the ultimate smoker nigga, the ultimate crystal ball, the ultimate martial artist, like, it's all, like, it's all basic shit that we all can come up with. Like, if I sat in a room with three of y'all niggas, we could come up with some shit like that, my nigga. Making this nigga Nagito have like actual powers damn near. And that nigga's luck pertains to whatever the fuck he wants inside life, bro. This nigga put five bullets inside a chamber and was like, well, I'm lucky. And shot the fucking gun, nigga. Like, there is no damn way. His entire trial for his death arc proves that shit, my nigga. He set up an entire immaculate ass plan. Stabbed himself 75 times in every single fucking limb, locked himself up, 
put some poison inside a fucking fire extinguisher mixed in with actual real fire extinguishers and his luck said yo i'm gonna make the nigga that you want to get incriminated for this shit be the one to grab that poison as you're bleeding out to be the final blow before the spear strikes your fucking heart like what how did you do that? Like, it should not be possible whatsoever, ever, my nigga. This nigga Nagito had the best strategies. He always, I feel like Nagito throughout the entire game always knew who the killer was. Like, not even on some Byakia shit. There was some case where Byakia didn't even know who the killer was and he was surprised what Kyoko brought to the fucking table. Nagito, he would make me mad and then that be the reason that I got mad. Like, he'd be like, bro. Hajime, you a bitch ass nigga for not knowing this shit. And then Hajime would think about it and be like, wait a second. Why did he say that? Is that nigga actually like that was crazy, bro? Like he would fucking he would lure you into a spider web knowing that it's gonna be the the killer who you're gonna find out who the fucking killer is, my nigga. Like he's just such an amazing character in every sense of the goddamn word, bro. Nagito tier for sure. I'm just gonna put like, I don't know, beyond go, because Nagito definitely doesn't deserve to be the only one inside this shit. I feel like Makoto for sure beyond go to me. And that might be about it. That might be about it, bro. Just those two niggas right now. Maybe Kyoko. Maybe Kyoko. Yeah, that might be it. Byakuya is cool, but he's definitely just a go. But these three right here, beyond go tier. Beyond go tier. Mihiru. I wish they would have dwelled into her character a little bit more. We know that she died because, you know, she was technically the killer for the Fuyuko's little sister. Either she was the killer or she was the reason that. She knew about it, I'm pretty sure. She took pictures of it and shit like that. But other than that, I mean, she was just a cool character. Like, nothing really special stood out. Nothing really extravagant. Um, she was just the cause of the case, too. They needed somebody to be the downfall for somebody for Peko Peko. So, she took that spot. Like, she was just a cool character. Um, she was the leader for a little bit. She, you know, was the one to keep everybody motivated. She was feeding Nagito. Um... She was a dope character. She was a dope character. She definitely did a lot of stuff that I forgot about now that I'm thinking about it. So definitely a dope character. That nigga Fuyu Hiko, bro. Probably as good as a character arc as fucking Byakuya, honestly. Like I said, he's just Mondo times two. Mondo, you know, in the sense of like having to take up the fucking leadership role for somebody. He is that nigga. <laughs> and I love the character. At first, I didn't like him. At first, I did not like this nigga what's so fucking ever. He was just always yelling, always mad about some bullshit. Would not hang out with this what's so fucking ever, bro. Like, Byakuya didn't. But then eventually, this nigga almost damn near killed himself to apologize to us, bro. Like, he said, yo, I'm sorry that I killed. You know, I got my hero killed. I apologize. If you guys don't fucking accept my shit, damn, here we go then. And cut his fucking stomach open like, god damn, bro. Very goaded character. Very goaded character. Mikan, she was cool, my nigga. The only bad thing about Mikan is that she just... Her trial, I know even after hearing... Because, okay, so it was explained to me, right? Yesterday it was explained to me. Mikan's whole reason that she did the killing or whatever is because she woke up and realized that she was the fucking ultimate despair like everybody else inside V2 was. We find out at the end of the game that all those characters are actually very, very bad people inside the real world that also killed their families and shit like that. All those niggas are bad characters, every single one of them. Mikan was just the one that got fucking sick, woke up from that shit and realized how bad she really was, and then killed off Ibuki. But it's just like, I don't know, bro. Without the ending being like that, her trial makes no sense. Like, I hate the trials where you gotta fucking wait to the end of the goddamn game, like the very last 30 minutes of the game to realize like, oh, that's why she, and some niggas won't even fucking remember that shit, like, some niggas, that case didn't even leave, leave such a lasting impression that they forgot about that shit completely, bro. So like, all these cases alone, my nigga, like, every case from Danganronpa 1, every case from Danganronpa 2, they all could stand alone. Everything you found out inside that case will be what it is, and then... You find out if you like the case or not. That is the only case trial where you gotta wait to the end of the fucking game and be like, oh. And then the, the reveal is already such like a a delay from the case. It's kind of just like, oh, okay, all right, I guess. Like, that's what it was, my nigga. But her character by itself, she was cool up until then. Um, maybe even dope. Yeah, she's a very dope character. Very dope character, my nigga. 
Don't want to quite put her inside that gold tier because the niggas inside these are just too fucking amazing. I ain't gonna hold you at all. But Mikan was a definitely a dope ass character for sure. I just don't have I don't have that much to say about her. Um, I know a lot of niggas like her, so I you know I, I wouldn't put her inside cool at all. I think she definitely deserves to be dope. But other than that shit, I don't know. Monami, not much to say about you. You just were existent. Um, you're a, you're a cool character to me. Monokuma definitely is way better than you. Monokuma honestly might be inside that Beyond Go tier as well. You don't deserve that shit at all. You got your ass eaten the entire fucking game. I ain't gonna hold you. And then at the very end, you wanna be like, Oh, I got my powers back! Like, no, nigga, no. Hell nah. How did she even come back? How the fuck did she even come back, my nigga? She died. Everybody else stayed dead. She just got the powers all of a sudden come back to life? Like, no, nigga. <laughs> Absolutely not. All your fucking clones got killed, bitch. Hell no, bro. Hajime! Hajime, Hajime, Hajime. The topic of the fucking video damn near. I did not like Hajime's character throughout the entire fucking game. The nigga just... Unlike, unlike Chihiro, my nigga, the nigga just not presume any confidence. The only reason I ended up liking Chihiro, because you guys tried to get me like that. Y'all tried to say that, why'd you like Chihiro's confidence art, but you didn't like, you didn't like Hajime's? That's because Chihiro... Throughout his entire confidence arc, he still had a very strong mental. His physical wasn't strong, but he he knew at the end of the day, I want to get stronger so I can help you guys. And he made that very fucking clear. He said that every chance he got that he was going to be strong so he could protect himself and others. Hajime's confidence arc lasted for 99% of the game. And that 99% was him doubting himself throughout the entire fucking game. Every single chance that nigga hated himself. And every single chance that nigga relied on somebody else to do something. Every single chance that nigga was always taking the backseat to other fucking characters. The entire game. And it wasn't until that last 10 minutes of the game. Where he fuses with somebody else and gets his confidence from her. Who of course is um, the homie Chiaki. That is the only time where he's like confident. Alright guys, we're all hopeful now. The entire fucking game. He is not that nigga. He is not that nigga. Let me compare this to this. I said this in the long ass 3 hour video yesterday. But you guys may have not even got to that part. You guys may not have heard that part. But I said imagine. Characters like Deku. Um, Asta. Naruto. Imagine their character arc didn't take place throughout the game. Like we didn't see them gradually grow stronger and stronger and stronger throughout the entire game. But that nigga Deku stayed a crybaby until se until season 7, episode 39, last fucking episode. And all of a sudden he's like, I don't want to be a crybaby anymore. No, hell no. Nah. And then we see him do some amazing ass features. Like, yeah, of course, it'd be a cool scene. We had to see that nigga be weak throughout the entire show. Like, it wasn't until the very last episode that nigga got big body, bro. Like, nobody does characters like that. We see them progressively grow throughout the entire game. And Hajime... Correct me if I'm wrong, we didn't see that nigga progressively do anything. Like, that nigga throughout the entire game all the way into the very end. He, almost, he even almost killed everybody. Like, unless, until Makoto showed up to be like, don't press that fucking button. Hajime would have been the one to be like, yeah, let's just go back to the island, fuck it. And then everybody would have fucking died. Like, no, nigga. <laughs> we didn't see that nigga grow at all, bro. Like, in any anime, we see the characters progressively get more confident. Like, they start getting more big body, more big body, more big body. They start taking control of shit. They start saying, like, no, we don't need to do it that way. We need to do it like this. How did it just seem like he was being controlled by everybody in the entire group the entire fucking time, bro? The entire fucking time. He was just being, like, just chauffeured through case to case to case to case to case, bro. Like, I don't know a better way to explain it. But I did like Hajime's, like, personality and the way he interacted with characters, I guess, bro. Like... Hajime as a character wasn't completely trash. I just didn't like his arc. His character was good to me. His arc is the only thing that was kind of like, okay, cool. Like, now he's Izuru. I don't even remember the nigga's fucking name because only brought up one fucking time, bro. Like, somebody commented that the guy's picture was also inside the, uh, the fun house or some shit, but nobody said anything about it. Like, nigga, we don't know this character. We don't know who Izuru is. He wasn't brought up inside the first game. He damn near was never brought up inside the second game and all of a sudden like like imagine I just like really relating to anime because you niggas love stuff like that. The reason niggas don't really like Shippuden that much is because at the very end of the series, 
we find out that Naruto and Sasuke are reincarnations of somebody else and that it all goes back to aliens and shit like that. That's the main reason niggas hate that shit. Because, like, where the fuck do these characters come from? Same way like this. Imagine if the last episode of fucking My Hero Academia, Deku did some research and was like, wait a second. There's a character named... Actually, it does do that. But it does it progressively earlier, my nigga. I think he gets, like, other quirks from the past niggas. Imagine that doesn't happen to the very fucking end. Imagine we don't even hear about the other quirks from the other fucking one for all niggas until the last episode where he's like, wait, I can use their powers? Oh shit! And then start doing the fucking black spider web. She's like, no, no, absolutely not, bro. No, 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 no. I need I need build up. I need foreshadowing. I need explanations. Maybe I just didn't do enough research. Maybe just I was just playing the game. In a way that I shouldn't have. Maybe you niggas saw the foreshadowing shit like that. I didn't see that shit. Hajime though is to me a very dope character. Would it be inside that goat tier? I wouldn't even put inside that. I put him probably inside like a. If there's like a .5 my nigga. Like a dope 1.5. Hold up. Hold up. I got y'all. I got y'all. I got y'all. Dope. .5. Sure. I got you right here my nigga. I got you right here. You're above these niggas. But you're below these niggas. And honestly I probably put Gundam inside here too. If any, now nah, I put him because I go tier for sure. But yeah, I probably have him right there, bro. Like, he's a very, almost very much teetering goat tier. Actually, hold up. A, a kid is a baby goat, so I'll put that nigga inside that shit. I'll put that nigga inside that shit. But that is my tier list, my nigga. Um, I'll make sure to put this shit in the comment section below. Let me know what the fuck y'all feel about this. Um, let me go ahead and put my camera up here so you guys can see the full tier list, my nigga. I don't know who the fuck those characters are down there. So don't mind them. I'll do that whole fucking character. We'll, we'll do that after I finish V3, my niggas. But I'm getting the fuck up out of here. Check on your strong friends. Pray for any other. At least wish them well. Picture this shit. Yeah. Take that shit, my nigga. Peace.